Do you remember the first time you saw this fucking thing? It's an insult to the eyes. But somehow these cyclopean annoying oranges became the face of Gary Gygax's legacy. So let's pose a simple question. Why do they look like this? Well, thankfully, they don't. They look like this. And this. And this. And this. The only thing consistent about their appearance is a bunch of eyes, another eye, and a floating circular body. I'm gonna go ahead and attest all that to a nightmare Gary Gygax had about a soccer ball with eyes. The reason they vary in design is because of their ability to warp reality around them by thinking. Very much like a dream, these things' physical traits are as inconsistent as XP to level 3's uploads, but their brains are all the same. Big as hell, alien like an octopus, and as insecure as our generation. Human beings have certain boundaries when it comes to understanding and exploring emotions, feelings, self-worth. A beholder doesn't have to deal with that shit at all. They view themselves as the center of the universe, and the rest of the universe scares the ever-living shit out of them. Everything around a beholder is meant to be subjugated, collected, or annihilated. But, with every aberration, their relationships with slaves and minions is a sort of a paradox. The defining trait of a beholder is its immeasurable xenophobia. As an example, if a beholder thought that one day it'll eat a bad piece of toast, and that toast will lead to an infection that ultimately kills the beholder. It will rationalize escaping to the depths of the ocean to avoid all toast. It would collect minions and command them to burn all wheat fields and bakeries on that hemisphere. So you could imagine how much they fear their own minions. Their many eyes are always darting around, ever alert of hidden knives or burnt toast. Sometimes being alone is scarier than being betrayed. Socrates. Instead of hiding, sometimes they'll collect powerful mortals as if they were minis and assimilate them into an army of minions. Now above I mentioned reality bending. Their whole nature, and their name, is defined by the word... Look. So that's where their abilities seem to come from. So do me a favor and look. Look at the many eyes. All eleven. Count them. Eleven eyes. Each one does a different thing, so let's run down the little list. The big ball of optical lenses and eye juice in the middle cancels out magic wherever it looks. So give me a quick second to correct this. Uh, acknowledge that looking at you is stronger than the wish spell. Account for its contingency plans, and there we go. This adorable little eye stalk has a habit of charming whatever it locks eyes with. You so fucking precious when you. The next one's line of sight is an anti nervous system ray. Then we have the piss your pants pupil, a slow motion camera lens, a gonna kill us oculus, the gravity gun from Half Life, a roofie ray. An eyeball stolen from a Gorgon, an eye that does what Thanos did to half the universe, and a second death ray for good measure. You can never be too careful. Beholders are nothing but variants on vision, so excuse how many eyeball puns I have to use. I apologize to my viewers. The way that they're described, there is no way for any adventurer to ever kill a beholder in any situation unless the DM plays them wrong. It seems to me the only way a beholder can die is by the hand, eyes, of another beholder. So give me one second to correct this, and there. Beholders can accidentally get into this situation by giving birth. Accidentally. Their overactive paranoia is exhausting, so these gravity balls go to sleep somewhat often, and their dreams that ensue are also fearful. Sometimes during a nap, a beholder sees another beholder in its dreams. And because their control over reality is a bit fickle, they wake up to a newly born beholder assassin floating five feet away. And the new beholder is also the center of the universe. So he says, fuck you, dad, and they duke it out. What a shitty way to die. The coolest thing about beholders is their dreamborn kin are as random as the monster's fears. So their nightmares are like a crackerjack box of new monsters. I actually made my own, and Mario Sack illustrated the doombringer of all beholders. But the variety pack often yields more common results, which we'll observe now. If a dreaming beholder has a brain fart, they create a sort of chibi version of themselves that acts like a spoiled alien cat. They tolerate these little eyeball balls because of vanity. And they're really funny. If you chop off four eye stalks from a dead beholder you found, you can use them to create a spectator. These things make decent guards, but the trouble you have to go through to make them is such a hassle. 
just hire a damn cannel off. If mind flayers get a hold of one, um, this. If you're persistent about owning a spectator, but fuck up the ritual, you get a goth. He says, sure, I'll guard your valuable magical items, and then he eats them, and you. If a beholder finds a goth, there's a 50-50% chance they become a slave or a pile of ashes. And if those last origin stories weren't random enough, a beholder who dreams about losing blood squirts out a death kiss. This little cutie only has one eye, a hunger for blood and thunder for blood. For some reason, they're super electrically charged. A beholder is classic mode, because it's a common fear for our bulbous buddies. However, if they dream about mirrors or other selves, they grow a little gang of themselves who work together and become extra unkillable. And lastly are the death tyrants. This is when Great Grandpa Beholder reflects on his mortality, and then pulls the badass move of straight up refusing it. He goes into a metamorphosis that just takes his skin, and he becomes a lich by sheer force of will lucky bastard. They get a special upgrade that lets them raise dead. Any number of dead. A mountain of skeletons. They're coming. Beholders try their best to make a lair that keeps them safe from the world, because worms and toast are just as potentially deadly as warlords and dragons. They just keep it all away. They carve out caves and chambers with their Thanos eye, block up secret tunnels with their gravity gun, and populate the lair that took them all of five minutes to make. Because you're jealous of Beholder feuds, I'll pretend you're one of them building their very own lair. Let's use uh, Terraria as a visual example. First, you find a natural cave, fill that shit with traps, and barrel through a nearby wall like a slightly uglier Kool-Aid man. Then destroy everything in a line of sight, so that only your five-foot round ass can fit inside. Every corridor should be in a random direction, so losers with legs can't do shit to you. Oh, what? Minions are complaining about hiking up and down? Just make a dungeon. Or, or dust them. Carve out some chambers, find some natural ones, and fill everything with either minions or more traps. The bigger and more cryptic, the better. We're hoping to reach a sewers of water deep level of complexity. Then, when you're good and cozy, but not too cozy because everything is out to kill you for some reason, you make a cute little gallery of art you fancy. Beholders like curios. We don't know why. Especially goldfish. And lastly, your think tank. Just put it above your gallery and make it cozy with some sand or a, a down pillow. Once a beholder has its man cave set in stone, it'll sit in its sanctum and think about what's gonna kill it. Then think some more. That's basically beholders.